Hi, we're at the Argyle Executive Investment Gold Forum, sponsored by the World Gold Council. Uh, we're talking to David Lamb, who's the Managing Director of World Gold Council in London, specializing in jewelry. That's me, that's what uh, I do. So, David, what's the outlook for jewelry for the next year? Well, I think we, we're at a particularly fascinating point for jewelry demand. Last year we saw a tipping point in uh, relation to our, our two lead markets, India and China, which collectively now represent uh, more than 50% of world jewelry demand. And looking at the way in which wealth is created and the ambitions that consumers have within those markets, we see an extremely positive outlook for overall demand driven by those two lead markets. India in particular has uh, experienced a great deal of growth in the last couple of years. Uh, what's the uh, outlook there for the next year or so? Well, we see it extremely positive. Just to put some scale on your overall um, conclusion about India, last year volume increased, this is volume increased in gold jewelry by 39.5%. If you look at local currency terms, the actual money that Indian women hand over for their jewelry, the market more than doubled uh, in volume. It increased by 101.1%. And in each of the first two quarters this year, we've seen volume increases. What we're uh, um, seeing is an Indian response, not just to their macroeconomic conditions, but to the vitality of an industry that is constantly putting great design at wonderful prices in, fr in front of consumers who can buy. What could you tell me about the amount of gold that Indian women hold compared to what the U.S. Fed holds? Well, this is an extraordinary statistic. Our research suggests that in the hands of Indian women, in their homes, in their security lockers, they're actually in charge of 18,000 tons. Now, just to put that in perspective, as a point of reference, the uh, U.S. National Reserves held in gold is around 8,600, between 8,6 and 8,7. So imagine that, physically in the hands of ordinary Indian women, more than two times the amount of gold in the hands of the Fed. That represents not just financial security for each and every one of those women, but actually um, a, a, a huge potential driver for the country's own economic growth. I mean, remember the Indian economy is driven by domestic demand. As banks begin to allow those women to collateralize that wealth, so that can only add fuel to the strength of the economy underlining not just the cultural importance of gold, but the financial importance of gold to a country and to its individual citizens, particularly its women. And in the U.S. last year, what are we doing? Well, we're, we're seeing a more depressed um, uh, performance by the, uh, by the U.S. jewelry trade. Uh, in tonnage terms, we saw a decline of 14, just over 14% 14 in 2010. But it's important to realize that in value terms, in dollar terms, that would actually turn positive. Our view, though, is that the American market is about to see, uh, to turn into a game of, of two halves. Um, at current um, uh, and uh, uh, future price points for gold, if, if current price levels are maintained, it's difficult for the mass merchandisers to hit uh, the price points they feel are important for their customers. But we see a dramatic reintroduction, almost a re-premiumization of gold at the top end of the trade. So the future for jewelry in America will be driven by, uh, a mar uh, uh, by the top end of the market, where the physical intrinsic value of gold is being used not as a barrier, but as a justification for a purchase in times when you're thinking now of fewer, better things. Thank you very much, David. My great pleasure, Terry.